So today we're going to take a look at a plugin for your web browser that basically will let you style every single website out there and it goes by the name of Stylus. So if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it will really help the channel out. We are getting very close to hitting 100 subscribers. We're probably going to be past 70 by the time that this goes up. So your help would be really appreciated if you would do that. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to be using this plugin with Firefox but it is actually available for Chrome as well and obviously for all of the derivatives of Chrome so like Brave and whatever else exists at this point. I don't know why you're using Chrome, just use Firefox, it's probably better. I know it's a bit messy on Windows but at least on Linux it is better. So the basically why I like this application, why I like this plugin is because I cannot stand the fact that most websites don't have dark themes. And you can debate the points about whether a dark theme is better for your eyes or not. I don't really care. All I want is a dark theme. And what Stylus lets me do is actually just add that to every website. I know that there are ways to do this with Firefox natively, but I'm not sure how to do them. This just simplifies the process and makes it so you don't actually have to do any restarts or anything like that to actually get the styles applied. So it's as simple as once you've downloaded the theme, you can just turn it on and then you've got it applied. So obviously they're not going to be perfect because they are user themes. So there's going to be some things that don't work like this down here, but you can actually go and then customize those themes. So let's say we want to use a different one. So we can go, not manage, we want to go find styles. And then this will list out all of the styles that are available on the theme store. But there is actually a a website that you can go to that will actually list out all these themes as well. I believe it is called user styles. So I'll bring that up now. So the website itself is called userstyles.org. It was made for the other version of this plugin called stylish, but I wouldn't recommend using that version because at some point it was removed for containing spyware. I don't know whether this is still the case because the plugin is actually back up on the plugin stores, but I would just avoid it and go with Stylus because I know that that one actually is safe. So let's say we want to get a theme for Wikipedia because that's what we were using before. And when it slowly loads up, we'll see that there's just all of these different themes that are available. So obviously there's tons and tons of dark themes, but there's other ones like say you want this awful looking gold one for whatever reason. So we can go to this page and then just install that and we can bring the Wikipedia page back up. And now it is this disgusting gold color. Once again, don't actually know why you would ever want this. So let's go to just a page like Linux, for example. And that looks absolutely horrendous. Don't know why you'd use that. I'm just going to use it for dark themes because they actually look good. So I did mention that you can actually do custom themes with this. So if we bring it up stylus, go to manage. This will list out all of the themes that you actually have installed. So we'll get rid of this disgusting one here. And let's say we want to modify, I've got this one for my, that I'm making myself for my UniSA login page because it is blindingly white by default and I really don't like how it's set up. So if we come in here, I've got this bit of CSS in here. So I'll show you what the website looks like with this theme and what it looks like without it. So we, I can start actually showing you what the differences are. So I was just cutting out the login portal there because I don't particularly feel like showing off my UniSA credentials. So with my theme applied, this is what the main page looks like. It doesn't work properly for the other pages right now. They still need a bit of work, but with the theme applied on the main page, this is how it looks. And without that theme, it basically looks like this. So it doesn't look awful, but when I'm looking at this page at night, I really don't want to be dealing with a blindingly white screen. So I've made this theme to apply to it. It might take a little bit to actually load up sometimes. So when you just write your CSS, basically it's just standard CSS. There's nothing special about it. It's just what you would normally use when you're writing the website. Depending on how the page is written, you might have to start digging through the actual source code for it or the, the DOM tree for it. So say I want to theme this part right here. So the easiest way to do that would be to inspect element, find out exactly how I can access that. So we want to say theme this H2 element here. So H2 my program. So that is themed from this here. So, so we want to change this part right here. So we want to change that color to 
red. So this is actually going to change a lot of the other colors as well because I've got some other content in here as well that's being themed. But if we save that, it'll then apply that change straight away. So that it just makes it really easy to actually modify these themes when you're working with them. So we'll just change that back because that's actually disgusting. But basically it'll make it really easy to modify these themes. So you don't have to worry about doing things like reloading the page or anything like that. As soon as you update it within this plugin window, then it'll update on your actual web page. So to actually set which web pages are affected is fairly simple as well. So if we come down to the bottom, so we can actually set how the URLs are applied. So you can say directly like fully mention the URL and then just add all of the URLs in that you want to mention, or you can do other things. You have the option of URLs that start with something. So say you want to do, I don't know, every Google URL that starts with www.google or you want to do everything on the domain of Google. It's probably easier to do it like that. Or you can also do regexes. So I've got a different theme, which shows off that fairly well. So we'll just leave this page. And I think that's my Google one. So if we wait for that to load up. So this actually uses a regex for some bizarre reason. And if we move this webcam to somewhere else. Yeah, it's got this massive regex to basically say, use this theme on every single Google service. It's probably much harder to do it like this. You, If you're doing your own custom themes and you're not working with a team of people, it's probably easier just to do smaller themes for a couple of pages and then maybe copy it to another unless you really want to deal with sorting out how this regex works. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to put in that time, go right ahead. So we're back at the theme that I was working on before. So you can also do things like export in the Mozilla CSS format. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do to it, but you can then submit these files to the stylish website so other people can access them. Or obviously you can just host them on GitHub if you'd rather do that. But putting them up on that extension store makes it a lot easier for other users to actually access it. So if you're going to do that, then you can also beautify it, which will basically just clean up the CSS, put new lines and stuff in there just so it's a bit easier to actually read what the file is. But there's not really any point doing that otherwise. And one thing I do want to mention is I know that there's probably going to be someone who mentions this at some point. I know that you can do this natively in Surf or you can do it with a patch in Surf. I don't really care that you can do that. If you're running that browser, that's cool. But the thing is that no one is using that browser. So the fact that you can do this in browsers like Firefox and Chrome, which are pretty much the only two browsers that people actually use, because at this point, Edge is also based on Chrome. The only third browser that people are really using is Safari. And only Mac people are using that because obviously it's only available on Mac. And personally, I don't like that browser in the first place. I've mentioned this before. I would recommend just picking something else. Not Chrome, I would recommend going to Firefox just because I don't want Chrome to take even more market share. So there actually was one more thing that I wanted to mention. So all of these options over here are just options for messing around with this editor screen in here. So you can like turn on and off word wrapping, smart indentation, Ta uh, use tabs for, with smart indentation, auto close brackets, auto complete on typing. You can turn off these color selectors in here if you want to. So that just turns those on and off. And I just noticed this. I didn't see this until like a couple of seconds ago. This editor in here actually supports a bunch of different editing modes. So I just realized that there is a Vim editing mode in here, which is awesome. But there's also a Emacs mode and a Sublime mode if you want to use those. And there's other things in here like you can uh, change how highlighting is handled. You can disable your CSS linter or you can just put in some different ones. I didn't actually realize these changes were in here. So you can also like, uh, what's a cool theme in here? Let's say base 16 dark. That looks horrendous. It's not my favorite theme. Maybe, maybe Dracula. Yeah, that looks much better. So it's not too important to the usability of the plugin as a way to theme websites, but it is nice to be able to actually modify this editor space here. So I lied before when I said it actually showed everything. So there actually is one more thing. You can disable the live previews if you don't want to see them. I'm not exactly sure why you would do that because it would make testing the theme so much harder. But if you're not a big fan of having live previews, then go right ahead and do that. And it'll just disable those. And then you can just refresh the page and it'll apply the theme then. 
So I think I've covered pretty much everything for the plugin this time. If I notice something else, I'll just re-record another scene and you guys will not be able to tell any differences. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. Hopefully the recording doesn't freeze this time because I had to redo this outro. So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. But as always, YouTube can never be trusted to actually push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So I'll put a playlist up on that side, which will have, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what playlist this will be in actually. I'll decide that afterwards. And I think that's pretty much everything for me. So I'm out.